Hello and welcome everybody. I'm recording this little bonus video to present you a nice little bit of mathematical software, namely uh, the software GeoGebra, which is uh, extremely useful in visualizing the functions we saw in the lectures in the examples. If you recall, we had several examples uh, regarding differentiability and related topics, where we had a function in two real variables mapping to R, and um, if you imagine the graph of such a function, the, so it's a map from R2 to R, or some subset of R2, it doesn't matter, from R2 to R. So the graph would be a subset of R3, of three-dimensional space. So theoretically, you can draw this in our three dimensions, but of course, it's quite hard to draw this for me on the blackboard. So I want to present to you some software that you can, that's very easy to use, that you can download yourself for free, and uh, discuss the examples from the lecture with you in this little video and to kind of demonstrate this. Okay, first of all, the software GeoGebra, it's quite a classic bit of software. Um, you find it on geogebra.org. It's non-commercial, it's, uh, I don't know if it's open source, but it's really, um, non, it's just uh, very good free software that you can download for all possible platforms. Um, first of all, you could use them online. You could just hit start calculator and then use various different things. So um, GeoGebra in general can do many things. This would be to, uh, this, this, Part of GeoGebra would be to draw graphs of just real functions or something. This is something you can easily do with that as well. And if you hit this drop down menu, uh, menu here, you can see that you can do many things like geomet uh, geometry, where you can do elementary geometry, draw triangles, circles, and other more elaborate constructions like perpendicular bisectors or whatever. Um, yeah, and the, the part I'm discussing today is the 3D calculator, and this can basically be used to do everything possible you can do with three dimensions. Uh, we will now use this to draw graphs of functions, but you can also see if you had tools here, you can draw three-dimensional objects, um, you can insert lines, polygons, whatever, um, solid objects, and so on. So it's kind of really good to do mathematical visualization in general. Uh, I don't want to go through all this, uh, through all the possibilities here because this will just uh, yeah take a lot too much time. But it's it's an extremely good piece of software. You can also register there for free, and then you get some cloud space where you can uh, save your projects. You could also save them locally in a computer, and. Um, What's also useful, you can really download the software and just install it on your computer, uh, and yeah, just without uh, and then without internet connection or anything, you can just do uh, GeoGebra wherever you want and to visualize wherever you want. And the software for this is GeoGebra Classic. Um, so this is this would look like this, and if you click a bit further, so here you see it kind of everything is included. Basically, it's also a bit of probability theory, spreadsheets, CAS, so computer algebra systems, um, where you can kind of solve systems of linear equations and so on. But this is something I don't want to discuss here. So um, yeah, if, and if you hit download here, you can just download the software and put it on your computer, and um, it should also be in all the major app stores. So it, it's definitely there for for uh, iOS, Android, Mac. Linux, uh, yeah, basically it runs on everything that's that's uh, halfway a computer. So um, yeah, let me present the software to you. So I've already pre-installed this here. Let's take a look. This is what it looks like. This is oh, yeah, like the online version, but just installed on my computer. Let's make it big for the moment. And uh, we want to focus on the 3D, 3D graphics part today. Okay, we don't need some help. There's some graphics tutorial, but we don't need this because I'm explaining this to you. So, how to draw graphs of functions now? You see, um, the good thing is you can really rotate this three-dimensional coordinate system and see, and you can also zoom in, zoom out with, uh, yeah, using your mouse or your trackpad or whatever. So, this is what you can do there. And now let's uh, take a look at the first example of a function. Um, let's take one simple function that I had in. Uh, the lecture course, namely uh, x squared plus y squared, this parabola is of course it. So um, you can either now type in x squared x, uh, y squared and you just have to click this particular field here where you just can enter a new function term. So you can either take this x squared plus y squared and now we see the graph here. This is this paraboloid. And if you can see now, I think the red variable this should be x and the green one, the green direction should be y. Um, you can see that in both directions, like if you would now intersect this with a plane going through this uh, red, through the red and blue axis or the green and blue axis, you would get a parabola. So this is what the thing in general looks like. Let's look at it from the top. It's uh, okay. But you can just rotate this around and see, I mean, this is of course a nicely symmetric object. Um, which is easy to, to handle in general. Now let's modify this example a bit and not take x squared plus y squared, but instead x plus y squared. Okay, now we get this, whoops, this graph here. 
And if you can see now, if y is equal to zero, then we would simply have x. So in the case of y equals zero, where y is now the uh, green axis here, oh, oops, sorry, this is the y axis here. So if we put this, uh, consider this as equal to zero, so let's maybe zoom in and take a, uh, a two-dimensional look here, you see that the graph over the red axis is precisely the, the this line here, which is on the edge here, and this is the graph of x, f of x equals x, the identity map. And if we now do the same with the other variable, uh, and this is now a bit harder to see, now uh, the part on the green axis would be this line here, which is on the graph there, so this is a parabola, because then we would have as an equation for the function just y squared, so you can see nicely here is our parabola. And in general, the whole three-dimensional object looks like this, so we had to have in, in the x direction, you see this, this diagonal thing basically, and everywhere where you would, uh, you, if you see all these lines passing through here, these are all basically yeah, lines for fixed values of x, uh, where, why are the other ones, these parabolas, are the cases for fixed values, uh, no, other way around. Fixed values of y are these diagonal lines here, and for fixed values of x we get the parabolas, and these are the, yeah, these, um, you see a lot of parabolas going through here, and here, and so on. So this will be the graph of that function. Okay, another very simple function we had in class was the function uh, e to the, and here you have the exponents, so you can figure out how to use this, uh, just a remark, if you see here, you can also find a lot of funny functions, so uh, logarithm, sine, cosine, the arc functions, you can also derive and integrate in parts in this, uh, uh, yeah, in, in this part, uh, software. Uh, but this is, uh, I will leave this to yourself to find out, but uh, if we now take e to the minus x squared minus y squared, this was another function we had in the course, then we see it's, it's a function which is like this. It looks like it's almost flat here, because you see if x and y become bigger, they, this goes to zero very, very fastly. You see here is, we have uh, x equals four and five and so on, they were already very flat, so to say. And we have this bump here, so we have one big hill in the middle, and you see the, the mountain top here, this is the origin, so it's over the origin. We take a look from upstairs. So. Um, this is this is the origin here, and you see if x and y are zero, this is equal to e to the zero, which is one. Otherwise, we have x to something negative, and we have seen in class that this is always smaller than one, so this makes sense, right? And this is again nicely symmetric because like the role of x and y is, is the same here, so we can just rotate this around and look at the symmetry of this thing. Again, if we would change something here, like let's say we take uh, the squared away from the x and now take that graph then it becomes a whole different function, because there we can really see what happens if x, uh, again, if x goes, uh, becomes, yeah, increases positively, we get, uh, yeah, it goes to zero very fast, but now if we get a negative x, this exponent can turn positive, and you see at some point it becomes, uh, yeah, just increases faster and faster, and so if we take a look at this from the side, where the case where y is equal to zero, we get the function of e, oh yeah, wrong way around, this way around, Okay, here, this is the case where y is equal to zero, then we see this is e to the minus x, so this looks like we would have expected. And in the same way, this would be kind of a, this, uh, yeah, some constant times e to the minus x, basically, for other fixed values of y, and there we get these lines here. Okay, now for the more curious examples. I've prepared the lecture notes here, so when I discussed partial derivatives and so on, I had some quite curious functions, so this here was this uh, yeah, x1 squared plus x2 squared, which is this, uh, corresponding to x squared plus y squared, now, this uh, second example that we have was this one. This was an example where the, um, the some directional derivatives exist and some don't. We have later on seen that this is partially differentiable, so in the coordinate axis we can derive, uh, but in the diagonal direction it, it, it broke, so that didn't work in the point 00. So let's take this function xy divided by x squared plus y squared. Let's take a look. Uh, okay, let's take another function, so we have x and y divided by x squared plus y squared. Okay, this looks mysterious. Now uh, let's, yeah, first of all let's add this, so this already uh, automatically gets named. Um, so let's remove this here, and you can just hit dot here, or either delete the whole thing, but you can also just hit the dot or remove it to only display part of it. So this is this curious function that we had, and we already see that in zero something weird happens. Here we see, uh, let's zoom in closer and closer. Okay, and here you can see that in, uh, yeah, it, it's behaving kind of strangely here in zero, zero. So here we had inserted this point zero, zero in there. 
And yeah, basically you can see it over the coordinate axis, it's just constantly zero. Let's take the green axis here, you see it's just going uh, around there. So here we would just have, um, yeah, if the function is zero here everywhere on this green line. The same here on the red line, on this axis the function is just zero. So this is why the partial derivatives take, but you see there's a discontinuity. If we take the diagonal directions, this would correspond to be kind of standing on the top here. You see that we arrive at uh, 1 over 2, which is also what we had in the course, so this is not continuous, um, because this is now of course hard to see, but there's only this one point here missing, and this is at 0. And well, yeah, here you can see this a bit, uh, I don't know how, what I did there, um, okay. But this is how it gets visible. So there's, there's a, you see that it gets closer and closer. Let's zoom in further and further. So it's somehow here, it's, it's just going down to oblivion. So this is uh, very close to zero. Some weird stuff happens. And you see, uh, oh, now I've turned away from the origin. How did I do that? Um, um, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is, yeah, here you can see that here there's something fundamentally different happening than on the coordinate. Okay, um, now I need to set back my coordinate system, so I want the origin in the middle. Um, let me, um, okay, let me cut here and then uh, get again when I fix that. And I'm back, sorry about that. I solved the problem by closing the software and opening it again, like a real pro. <laughs> anyway, um, the next example I want to study is a very simple one again, and this is something that popped up here when I computed some partial derivatives. This function e to the minus x1 squared minus x2 squared, or e minus x squared minus y squared, this is what we've just already seen. But there's now the other function sinus of x1, x2. This is not a very exciting function, but let's take a look at this anyway. So this time we can use this function version here, and here we have sine of x, y. Let's take a look, and this now looks interesting. So this, this is, uh, yeah, like a funny family of signs. So first of all, we see if one of the two is zero, either x or x zero, then, um, yeah, the, 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 we have the sign of zero, which is zero. So again, over the red and the green axis, the function becomes zero. There, there are no other values. But we see in the other directions, funny stuff happens. For example, um, let's take a look at this diagonal line here. So the diagonal that crosses these two axes. So this would correspond to the case x equals y. And there you could see then we get sinus of x squared. So this is a sign, which is because the square is, is increasing faster than the original term. So we can see um, and we have only have non-negative terms here, so it's like a wave which goes up and down and up and down and faster, 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 faster. So let's take a look from there. So from the bottom it looks the same. This is really sine waves as we imagine them, but kind of, uh, yeah, their, their speed is uh, increasing. Okay, looks funny anyway. So this is an example of that function. So let's take a look at the, another more sophisticated example that we had in the class. Namely, we have seen differentiability and the relation from differ of differentiability and partial differentiability. And here was the example of a function which is uh, for which all directional derivatives exist, but which is not differentiable. So how does this look like? This was x1 to the 3 divided by x1 squared plus x2 squared. Let's take a look. Um, okay, that's put away this function, so we get x to the power of 3 divided by, oops, sorry, this was an exponent, uh, x3 divided by um, x squared plus y squared. Okay, and this is now a funny object. You see that something is uh, behaving strangely here, so we can uh, really see that in every direction it looks if we kind of draw a line through the origin which is what we do when we take directional derivatives everything behaves well like a function and all the directional derivatives can be constructed but if we zoom in here um, the the morale is basically that it's not really behaving like this in any way so if you see these um, functions in detail it's very hard to see and if you take the different slopes of all the derivatives in there you see that they don't add up together and you can't approximate this directly because um, if we would have this, so that you see the direction of derivatives here, this like in the green direction, this would be zero. Um, but if we have the red direction, it's really this, this having this one. But if we take the, the direction in between and so on, we cannot just put the... So if we would have the graph for the near map here, which is a plane, which approximates this best. So this must be like, yeah, diagonal along the red axis. Uh, so include the diagonal and this green axis here. So actually, if we... 
uh, drew a diag diagonal line here through the graph uh, and take the green axis, it would be the span of these two. This would be the the graph of the derivative. But then you can see basically because of this behavior, it goes. You, you can see that in between it goes down fast and so on. So it doesn't really approximate this function very well. Um, so this simply doesn't work. So um, yeah. This, yeah, it's quite hard to tell from the graph, but this is where the problem lies in general. Okay, let's zoom out a bit again and go to the next function and another function that we had seen so far. And again, I'm not in the center anymore. What did I do anyway? Um, uh, as you see, I'm not a professional with the software anyway, but uh, yeah. Okay, this is what we had. Um, and I'm back, sorry about that. Uh, the final function I wanted to show you is not contained in the lecture notes, and I forgot about that, because I wanted to show you something which is not defined in a point. This function we're seeing here is this expression here, x divided by x squared plus y squared. And the idea is now, of course, that if we would kind of imagine we would divide everything by x, then we would have 1 over x plus y squared divided by x something, but um, there you can see that it looks a bit like a hyperbola. So the degree of the numerator is strictly smaller than the degree of the denominator here. And this leads to phenomena similar as in one dimension where you have a pole, so to say. Now, this would be the graph of this function here. And you see that kind of if y is equal to zero, we would just have one over x, which is the hyperbola. So if the green axis, if we're just on zero, the term over the red axis, uh, if you, uh, the function over the red axis would be the here, this boundary curve there of this graph here and you see that it is hyper, uh, hyperbola as you've seen it in high school. Now here in, in a general way you see that zero is the only problem because if x is any other value then we know that the denominator is never zero. So in this case if x is fixed to some other value than zero uh, we get a well-defined function the same with y and you see that kind of how it behaves in the different directions. So here you can really see this is a two-dimensional pole so to say. Okay, so this, this is also something that GeoGebra can do. And uh, I can only encourage you to try this for yourself, to download or to use it online, and just play around a bit. Just insert different functions you want to understand and show you some, uh, or did, yeah, try out some, some of the examples you've seen, it might be in textbooks or in my lecture notes or wherever, uh, on the exercise sheets, uh, you can also try them. So um, yeah, this is kind of a really useful tool and I only encourage you to use that and also, you're, of course, very welcome to try all the other different functions of GeoGebra because we've really only seen parts of it. Like, you can really draw any funny thing. Let's draw a pyramid, for example. Um, so, we have, we can just choose the foundation of the, uh, we can just take any polygon. So, let's take it, which is not really beautiful, but now here we can put in another point and elevate it and we've got a pyramid there. So, just, just to show you, whoops, no, no. Enough, enough of pyramids, sorry. Um, yeah, you can also just points and line segments and so on. Um, now the pyramid is gone, okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, but um, you, you can, I can't really, uh, I'm not good at this, but you can really use all kinds of three-dimensional, three um, yeah, visualizations that you can use there. And also the other uh, parts here, so um, we can also, like, we could switch to the, to the, uh, software for two-dimensional graphs and so on. So basically, you can do everything you really need to do with math uh, for yeah for, for most of your purposes. So um, please just try this app, and I hope this was a bit of help for you because this visualization in the software is much much easier than on the blackboard to to draw three-dimensional graphs. Okay, and I hope this was helpful for you. And let's leave it at that. And so we'll see you uh, in the next regular lecture video. See you then.